So hi, this is Shanzai.com back on day two with our uh, further look at the iPad. I've actually decided to do a diary over the week uh, which will include some videos of uh, what's going on with the usage of the iPad. Even already on the second day I have some new opinions and ideas about the device that are changing so it'll be interesting to follow along what I think through the, a week or so of usage. Uh, if you look at the device right now, it's looking about as beautiful as it gets. They don't even include a chamois inside of the device, which is amazing because I think at the end of this video, when we've been showing you a little bit, we'll look at it again and I think you'll see it just looks like it's covered in fingerprints. It is a fingerprint magnet and you think, but a simple wipe, I just wiped it on my t-shirt belly actually and uh, it comes off and, and looks pretty good like that. You don't notice the fingerprints and things when the device is actually on so much. It's, it's good because the backlight and the background of the actual uh, interface doesn't show the fingerprints, but when you're not using it, it's just laying there on the ground, it really does look quite, uh, actually quite bad for such a beautiful device. Um, so after using it yesterday and for quite a bit of time today actually as well, uh, I've had some more experience with the keyboard. The keyboard is, is quite good and really easy to use actually for typing, but actually it's only good for typing in certain positions that I've noticed. If it's flat on a table or sitting on a desk, it's not actually that great. You're kind of wishing that there was little legs or maybe a little stand to prop up behind the, the device to give it a little bit more of an angle. It doesn't feel comfortable trying to type flat down onto a flat uh, device that way. But in the couch computing mode where you've got it resting on your knees or something, I think you'll find it actually is a, in that position, it is quite comfortable. So the idea of it being a sofa computing device or something, if you're gonna do actual input and use the keyboard, that, that makes quite a bit of sense. Um, Another thing that is a bit annoying, unfortunately, is because we're here in Asia, we're getting a signal saying that we cannot connect to the App Store when we try to, uh, to do that. It's not able to, but fortunately, you can get, get them downloaded through iTunes on my computer and then sync uh, applications over onto the device. Uh, immediately, I noticed when I started trying to find some, get some applications on here, that there wasn't that fantastic book application that they show in a lot of the preview stuff that Steve Jobs was showing up with, the, the nice brown bookshelves and different books. And to be honest, I haven't been able to find it yet in the iTunes store yet either, so uh, I'm not an iTunes expert by any means. I use a hacked version of my iPhone, so it's, uh, I don't use iTunes to get stuff off of my device. And that is kind of one of the downsides, I guess, of uh, the Apple kind of control approach. But on the other side, flip side of that, applications that are all written for the iPad specifically that we did get your hands on so far really do look fantastic. One I wanted to show you off the bat here is the uh, weather application. And this is from AccuWeather.com. And if you look at the um, if you look at the at the device on the web, that is actually quite beautiful. It's very clear to see what the forecast is going to be over several days. Uh, the information is nicely well presented. That's a lot nicer than the original weather application that was on the iPhone, and, and maybe that's why they didn't include it. Um, whether I had to go and download that, there is no weather app on the, on the iPad to go and start. You can tell that it's really been written specifically for the iPad. You've got an interesting lifestyle section here, which is actually kind of creative. They tell you what today's weather, whether it's good for or bad for certain uh, activities. Good for dog walking today, poor for outdoor activities today. Barbecue weather is poor. It's kind of an interesting way to think about the weather in more of an activity-based uh, uh, format. So actually, that's quite cool. Uh, you can see the settings and the icons here are large, and probably I would say this is a, a fantastic example of a simple application that's uh, well suited for an iPad layout. You can see an advertisement popped up in there, which was kind of not too obtrusive, I would say. Uh, Another one that I wanted to show specifically, and that they showed a lot in the demos on the uh, some other reviews, is the actual uh, Marvel Comics uh, interface. This is one of the comic books inside of it. I think comic books are absolutely, totally suited to the iPad format. The colorful, beautiful screen, the being able to go through the pages at nice is really, really uh, fantastic. You can see down here along the bottom, when you tap the screen, there's a way to navigate further along to advance through the comic book to different parts. But also, oops, we're inside of the uh, application here now, and you can see they have all the entire uh, library of available iPad-based um, comic books, and several of them are for free, the first versions of each of the different comic book series to give you some content to try out. And it's as simple as pressing on the green icon beside the device, 
gives you a bit of a review, let you know whether or not you want to download it. Obviously, you can see that the way the application is written, it's totally perfectly designed for the iPad. So it's an excellent example of what an app can be like on when it's tailored specifically for the device. Um, some of the other more basic applications that are included, like the calendar application, I think is pretty good. Uh, it's as, at least as nice as something as you would get on your desktop experience, if not better. YouTube, I happen to think on uh, the iPad is better than a PC experience. Let's see if we can bring up some stuff here for you. Loads pretty quickly. Very basic information about the different devices. Can uh, load up an actual video right off the bat fairly quickly. It fits on the screen vertically quite nice, so you can look at things like comments and things like that while you're actually watching the video. But flipping it over to the various formats if you want to have your full screen experience. I think it's quite impressive for that. That's our own chance I video that we made earlier that you can uh, Android based tablet. But uh, yeah, no, I think the, the YouTube experience there is is really quite nice. A lot of information gets to fit on the screen, especially after say using it an iPhone like I have or another smartphone for YouTube. It's definitely a superior experience. And I like it better than on the PC to be honest. Um, if you look at the contacts, I'm not sure about the contacts thing here. I haven't set up my email account on it. I'm a Gmail user actually, so I'll eventually have a, a Gmail account set up on here. We'll go through that a little bit more detail in one of our next videos. But the basic contact application now seems a little bit uh, weak. <laughs> but I'm not sure why Apple has done such a great job with this. I noticed this on my iPhone as well as on the uh, iPad. But the little buttons on the side for actually doing alphabetical navigation through your contacts and very Why they make those buttons so tiny, I have no idea. Everything else is large and easy to touch with your fingers, but for some reason on both the iPhone and the iPad, I find that really troublesome. Um, I'm going to be uh, doing more video for you later in this week where we'll get a chance to go through even more about the software applications and talk more about the user experience. I guess the last thing I want to do today would we'll go just it didn't get too much, too bad the uh, fingerprint to the, but uh, just to give you an idea. Actually, after about an hour's use, I found that the thing would absolutely look smeared and covered in fingerprints. Uh, the other thing I've noticed is I'm totally nervous about carrying this device around. Maybe that goes away after you've used it for a few days and get comfortable with it. It's slim and really sturdy, but that slimness just kind of scares you, like you're going to drop it or you're clumsy. I'm a clumsy guy, so I guess maybe that's part of the issue. But uh, I'm hoping that that will improve if. Uh, after using it and getting more comfortable with the Dyson device and just not worrying about it so much. Anyway, that's it for uh, today's uh, video and uh, I'll get back to you with some even more impressions of the product uh, tomorrow.